Check one, two, check one, two, one, two, three in the place to be. I am the OG T to the W and this is my homeboys, the nasty boys in the building because they don't want to trouble you. I got big head and ways and we going to do this in many different ways because you heard what I say. What up though, big head? What up though? This is the showdown. What up though, ways? What's good? This is the showdown. <laughs> What up, though? Yeah, this the show where we talk smack. This is the show where we talk sports. This is the show where we talk fantasy football. This is the show where we talk about what we want to talk about. You know why? Because this is the showdown. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to each and every one of you. There is a reason I'm so pumped. It's because it's the new year. And I had a great New Year's Eve. I stayed home. I rearranged my studio. I watched some, some TV. I got high. I got drunk. I bust some shots up in the air. And it was a wonderful night. It was a wonderful night. It was a wonderful night, and I feel great. I feel great, and I feel rejuvenated. I feel renewed. I feel renewed year. It is January 1st, 2024. Fuck Carlton is in full effect. And Big Ed, how you feel? How was your New Year's Eve? Man, my New Year's Eve was good. I, I, I had my black eyed peas. Man, those was good, so I, I'm, I'm hoping for the good luck to come this year. Ah. Uh, I didn't get to bust no shots in the air, but somebody around me was busting shots at somebody's house. It was so many shots flying up around in Detroit. It's, it's ridiculous. Man, it sounded like a war zone over here. Yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. Ways, how was your New Year's Eve, sir? Uh, it was, what? It was pretty darn good. I'm not going to lie. It was low key. Made some food and kicked it with Kim and the kids all night. And that's it. Nice and quiet. I ain't got to worry about that. That's where I'm at. I'm in the country. You know what, man? Get used to it, brother. Because you are... You are almost married now. Ain't no going out for New Year's Hey, I want an invitation to the wedding. That's what I want. That's what. That's all I know. I want to... I I make sure that I get an invitation to the wedding. Oh. Because if, if, if means... If I have the means to be there, I will be there. I, I will say that the only thing that will stop me from getting there is financial means. What way we begin? I was gonna say we got a double team to reception. What you talking about? Uh, he's gonna need DJs. Oh, <laughs> he wants some real DJs though. He don't I'll want to say that. Yeah, no, we we're gonna get to hire someone for DJ. Yeah, he don't want big ed. He don't want big ed. I'm not hiring. He'll be in there playing some some. Oh, 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 you know, a big air to be in there playing. It's a whole lot of money in this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I, hey, I, I got a playlist that Kim's family would love. Uh, yeah, see, see, that's the problem. That's the problem right there. He trying to, he trying to, he trying to. Get out the way, bitch. Get out the way. <laughs> uh, and me, I'll be up there playing Waze's new theme song. Another one bites the dust. <laughs> <laughs> oh, baby, I like it more. Yeah, baby, I like it more. <laughs> Another one bites the Stop it. Cut it short. Cut it short. I'm in that kind of mood, folks. It's January 1st, 2024. Happy New Year to you. I said it once. I'll say it again. And don't be mad at me if I say it again before we're done. Because I am happy for you. I'm glad you made it. If you are here to watch this, you made it another year. And so did I. And that is not promised to any of us. And we all know that. So it's a beautiful thing. It's a blessing. And I, I celebrate it. I really do celebrate it. Uh, that's real talk. Real talk. Real talk. Real talk. You see, I got the ring light going. You can see it in my glasses. You see it? 
See the way you like my glasses? So you're going to see that go on there every now and then because I, I couldn't use it before because uh, there was a wall. So now the wall is behind me so I can use my ring light. But I'm still working on it. This, this whole this whole look here is a work in progress. So I want y'all to take a snapshot of this right now. And then take a snapshot on uh, New Year's Eve 2024. When New Year's Eve comes 2024, take a snapshot here and compare it to the snapshot from last year, from from tonight. So this will be this is this is day one 24. Wait till you see it day one 25. It's gonna look like a whole different. It's gonna it, it, it's, it's it's a whole lot of money in this motherfucker. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. So what else going on, man? Ways, what's happening, man? And I'm much. Uh, uh, I'm in ramble mode. I'm sorry, folks. I'm sorry. It's like I'm here by myself. Go ahead, okay. I'm sorry. It was an interesting weekend in uh, fantasy football, to say the least. Oh, uh, it was championship weekend, and you know what? Every now and then, you you uh be out with your friends, and you got one friend that start a fight, and then y'all get in a big fight. He get beat up, or he barely even he barely even there for the fight. He just gets stumped out early, knocked out early, and he just got hanging on the sideline. But then your boys sit there and they keep fighting, and y'all come back to the house and you know, everybody talking about how they y'all kick their ass, and he talking louder than anybody, and he ain't do shit but get his ass beat. That's Carlton. That's all I'm gonna say. What else we got? Oh, <laughs> what else we got? He doing all the goddamn talking. Uh, he, he ain't done Waze, shit, but he doing all the talking. Uh, Ways earned it one uh, a chip this weekend in the smoke session. Earned uh, Ways. Ways got a few chips. Ways balled out this year. Yeah, big up to Ways, man. Yo, what's what's up, Ways? It's a whole lot of money in this motherfucker. Yo, give it up for Ways. Ways won the EFG battle. Mm-hmm. Yep. He won that chip. Uh, that, that one, uh, I did lose the big dogs eat chip. So uh so BSB did defeat the nasty boys in the finals uh because I did lose that because Cole Komet gave me a goose egg and Cole Komet gave me a goose egg and was that boy CD Lamb just had an absolute monster of a game that I couldn't overcome. That was that, and that that's and, and because of those two those two factors, um, I, I couldn't I couldn't over I couldn't get it. There was nothing I could do. So big ups to Big Randy for BSB for getting the win. Even though Big Randy sent me a text and said, "Yo," well, he sent me a hit me hit me up on a personal inbox and said, "Yo, great game, man, great season, blah blah blah." And we kicked it for a minute. We were cool, but. You know who's been talking all that shit? Bitch! Yes, him. Carlton. Been talking more shit than a little bit and ain't done shit. Ain't done shit. Barely made the playoffs and got smoked the first round. By me, by the way. So, no, you still don't call shots. He been talking all that shit. We going to commit next year. We commit next year. Or we ain't going to run it back. I don't give a fuck if we don't run it back. Fuck you. I'm just saying, you don't, you're not a good commissioner. I have not, I have not witnessed you be a good commissioner. I'm. This is me to you, Carlton. I, I, you know, I don't complain. You ain't never seen me bitch and moan in your leagues, but I have been in your leagues. And in your leagues last year, the last time I was in, in your leagues, you had a comment section full of people people bitching and complaining moaning all the whole time and you going back and forth arguing with people over shit that you doing and why you doing it and blah 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 when it came to my league the only person in the comments bitching with you nobody on your squad nobody on my squad just you that's the only person so i don't see what your problem is but it's obvious that you the problem. So I, that's all I'm saying. So as far as whether or not we commit, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. I ain't thinking about next season yet. 
I got a lot to think about for next season because a lot of things going to change between now and then. I promise you that. But those changes are inevitable. And right now, we ain't going to even discuss who's commissioning next season. And if you want to back out because you can't be the commissioner, I don't care. But that's fine with me. I don't want to. I'm going to back out if you are the commissioner. How about that? How about we go that route? I don't care. How about how about we go that route since we're going to go that route? If you're the commissioner, I'm out. How's that? How's that? Okay. All right. So we'll, let's just cross that bridge when we get there. Whoever the commissioner is, the commissioner is. Bottom line is, y'all y'all did get a win, and big ups to Big Randy. It was a great game on his on his behalf. Um, like I said, I couldn't overcome CD Lamb. Shit. You take CD Lamb out and I win the game. Yeah, that was forty. <laughs> man, he scored forty four points in most leagues. He yeah. got forty six in this one, and then 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 Cole Komet gave me a goose egg. Thank you for, uh, 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 Chicago. Thanks. In that C, uh, EFG Supremacy League, he's I was, uh, CD Lamb had me punching up for the rest of the week. After that game he had, I was just sitting there fighting for the, my life until that very last game. And Zay Flowers and Justice Hill came out and just put it in. Shit, Jordan, uh, Jordan Love put his work for you too, didn't he? Oh, Jordan Love did his thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, well Dwayne won won by a landslide. He he blew him out though. It was a blowout. I mean, I, I mean I lost by about forty, and CD Lamb put up forty six. I mean, damn. Right. Uh, but it was a good game. It it was a good season. I I I, 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 I kicked a lot of ass. We did. We was we were heads up. He thought he's trying to act like they mopped the floor with us and all of this. And he they, they, y'all didn't mop the floor with us. It was five three five five teams to three in the playoffs, and we were we were going four four for the bulk of the season. It was a very even even evenly matched series throughout the season. We recap every week. We recapped every week. We yep. know it was close all year long, so it wasn't the floor with us. So shut up because you lost. Hmm. You got your ass beat. You personally got your ass beat, and you want to brag on your friend. All right. Anyway. Uh, in Woods, in the What Up Those Show Best Ball League, here's what's funny, okay? So the, what the Best Ball League was, we took turns taking picks. So there's no team that we didn't pick a team. Uh, we all were con- contributing to every team in this league. All three of the teams, but we had to take ownership of three teams in order to be a part of the draft. Ironically, all three of the teams that we were on, took ownership of made the playoffs, except Big Ed's, and he was the only one who tried to cheat. But Dijon took ownership of a team who ended up with the best record in the league, actually. But the team that ended up winning the championship was the team that Big that Wade took ownership of. Wade. <laughs> and he actually won that one by the skin of his teeth. No, he won 170 to 143. Uh, I'm looking at in what's best ball. Uh, 123.70 over 123.10. No, um, no, you're wrong. The championship was was uh, Pigskin Pro, which is Ways, versus Team 7, and the score was 170.2 to 143.8. What? Yep. Thanks for chiming in, though, buddy. Thanks I, for chiming in. I'm not gonna lie, in. I'm seeing the same thing uh, Big Ed saw. I'm yeah, looking. I'm looking at it right now. I'm looking at it right now. It says one twenty three point seven zero to one twenty three point one zero. Nope. Nope. I'm looking at. I am looking at the finals championship round. Pigskin Pro at the two seed versus the four seed Team Seven. The score is 170.2 to 143.8. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's weird. Okay. Yeah. I'm just telling you what I'm looking at here. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm just, uh, we just tell you what we're looking at. Those <laughs> gatekeepers over no. team seven. No, are you looking at the wrong best ball? You don't see Joe's gatekeepers? I'm looking at what's best ball, but it, it just says Pink Skin Pro YT. Yeah, if you go to like the matchups, it'll say Joe's gatekeepers. 
Joe's gatekeepers over Team 7, 170.2 to 143.8. <laughs> you need more info? You need more info? Geno Smith was his quarterback and dropped 16.9. Brees Hall dropped 27. Oh, look at it on my phone. Najee yeah. Harris dropped 24.2. CD Lamb dropped 40.2. George Pickens dropped 20.1. Juwan Johnson dropped 23. Mike Evans dropped 10. And Jason Jackson Smith and Jigba dropped 8.2. See, it, it's showing me something different on the computer. That's because you're not supposed to look at best ball on your computer. That's oh. probably why I'm seeing the same thing you are, bro. Yeah. It's an app. Um. <laughs> it's an app. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mr. Always trying to up try oh, he always try to upstage me. If he wouldn't try to upstage me so much, then he would be okay. But anyway, the World War, uh, we got smoked by by Death Row. Damn, we got smoked by Death Row. It was a Death Row versus Death Row playoff. And um the champion is Even though he's a 49er fan, that's why I give him a break. But Team Mr. Perfect won it all over over Purge Nation, 133 to 125. Um, let's yeah, what's see. his name, Ant? Yeah. Ant. Adam Ant. Nobody want to hear that. Adam Ant. Adam Ant. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You ever seen that movie, Sling Blade? No. You never saw the movie Sling Blade? I don't think so, no. Uh, yeah, I like that movie. That's the kind of movie Wade would really like. Check it out. Winner of uh, Leaders of the New School, uh, Midwest Monsters was against Midwest Monsters. Uh, they, stumped, uh, they stumped out Steppers Only. Um, Yosemite Yam. Knocked off uh, Chris Crisis and Team Crisis in the finals, 228 to 199. Uh, let's see here. Smoke Session. Smoke Session. Who was in the Smoke Session finals, Big Ed? Ways against Johnny the Mechanic. Ways against Johnny the Mechanic. Oh, and Ways blew Johnny the Mechanic out. Kicked his ass. So Johnny the Mechanic had a good season, but he didn't have a good – he had a good season. He had a great – I would even call it a great season because he had a really good season. He had really good playoff runs, but he didn't do great in the finals. He beat me in one of them. We're going to get to that. Uh, but uh, I, he, he lost the rest of them. He lost a lot of, he lost a lot of finals games. Uh, for instance, he was in the college football kickoff finals against um, – Jonah, Jonah, Captain Conquer. His name is uh, Jonah G Man, and he got his ass kicked in that one, one thirty-eight to ninety-four. Um. So yeah, he made it. He made it uh, far. He had a good run, but he got to the finals and st- kept getting his ass kicked in the league. Another one of Acorn's leagues. I want to say this real quick. And y'all know I give props what props to do and not what it not, just to let let you know. Carlton and I, I don't have bad blood against Carlton. He's just not a great commissioner to me. He's not a good commissioner even. But uh so as far as him commissioning next year's league, I still I still will show show a little resistance. At this time, who knows what happens by the time we get ready to do a season. I may I may have a change of heart. But Acorn is a good is a is a good commissioner to me acorn does a good job um so anyway he 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 has the league and j 49ers won that one uh let's see who else we got to me acorn is a really good commissioner um many money many money many 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 money who won many money uh let's see jab again johnny the mechanic made the finals and lost in the finals to 
the Dirty Dogs, the same person who won. That's Willie White. Willie White won many money over over uh, Jab, and he also won the Clash actually over Dijon. So let's go on ahead and bring that up. Dijon uh, got drunk the night before, didn't set his lineup, and lost the Clash. Ooh. No excuse, man. No excuse. No excuse. I know it's New Year's, but uh, yeah. So the Clash, the Clash, SWG won the Clash over EFG, the collective. Um, Willie White defeated Dijon in the finals of the Clash. Uh, In the War Zone, um, who was in the War Zone finals? BSB. B was against uh, HP Dream, 08 Brown, and J49ers. J49ers has won, uh, won the, the championship in the war zone. So, again, Carlton talks all the shit, but he didn't get the ring. All right. So, yes, and I hear you, Carlton. I, I can hear him now. But it only matters is we won. No, that's not my all team that won. Won. My team won. That's you know? not all that matters if you're talking shit. If you're talking shit, that's not all that matters. When you start talking shit, what matters is what the fuck did you do? So in the pop-up draft, which was Chris's league, guess who was in the finals? That one was me against Johnny the Mechanic, and Johnny the Mechanic kicked my ass 191 to 143. I'd be goddamn. Lamar Jackson wore me out. Uh, Let's see. Who else he had that wore me out? And and Pacheco, believe it or not, Pacheco wore me out. The Bills' defense was good. Uh, Pickens had a good game, and Travis Etienne had a good game. So, yeah, he kicked my ass. That was a good game, but it was a a thorough ass whooping on his part. So, big ups to Johnny the Mechanic. On the pop-up draft, championship and in the uh chinese corruption i won that one i won uh i I knocked off dirty jobs 133 123 it was a great game got him by 10 so the chinese corruption is mine and let's see who won speed force oh we still got one more game with a two-week uh championship oh and y'all up against each other right yep and so far, Waze is kicking your ass. Yeah. So far, Waze is winning 111 to 94. Because I wasn't able to change out Keenan Allen in time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's already making excuses, folks. Oh, he's, he's, he's out of there now. Sit at least twice a week. I would, thought, I would think he wouldn't be making excuses yet. I won the Nasty Football League too. Ooh. I took up Durio in a big manner. I won, won 334 to 240. Ooh. Yeah, I kicked his ass. Who won Showdown Battle World? Uh, Battle World, Battle World. The man said Battle World, Battle World. All right. So uh, it came down to God's favorite. Up against uh, <laughs> Hila Rednecks. Hila Rednecks. And uh, God's favorite pulled off that win with uh, two Jesus old. Jesus Peace got him one. Yeah. And I actually played OG, uh, or sorry, uh, Johnny, for the uh, third place and beat him there. And it coincidentally, his uh, score is the exact same score he had when he lost to me uh, over on the smoke session. Hmm. And I do want to say this. In most cases, I say third place don't count, but I know third place counts to him. Mm-hmm. I know that he plays hard for third place. He tries to win third place, so that's a loss. He takes that L. He's got to eat that L. He does, because <laughs> I know how he is. I know I know that he takes that serious. Uh, the Dynasty League was one by Willie White again. Willie White kicks his, Willie White had a good season. He might be GM of the year here. I Willie think. White then won the Clash. He won Dynasty. And uh, I did take third place in Dynasty. Um, I want to give a big ups to uh, 
this guy. What's his name? DL DC Draw. DL Craw. DL Craw. DL Craw came in, or the DLC Raw. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's DLC Raw. Anyway, he uh, he's a new guy in Dynasty. We had a person drop out of the league at the beginning of the season, and we didn't notice that we were into the season. So he jumped into the league and took over this team and was extremely aggressive uh, with making trade offers across the board. Uh, he made some good trades, good solid trades, made a lot of free agent pickups, and he got this team all the way to – uh, the semifinals. So they came in fourth because uh, I defeated him in the, in the, in the for third place. Um, but uh, I say congratulations for taking over a team that was left for dead and bringing them all the way to the final four. I thought that was that was commendable. I would. I have that was commendable. Yeah, and, that's dope. Uh, and that's all. I, I'm, we're just gonna do the sleeper leagues. I ain't gonna go into all the rest of them. Too many leagues to go through, uh, but that's all the sleeper leagues, man. Right. If, is there anything that I'm missing that y'all want to that y'all want to bring up? Uh, not league wise, but I do have a fantasy football question for you. Hit me with it. Hit me in the face with it. During this playoff run of uh, this fantasy season, who is your clutch player or players? I didn't. I, I I can't say I've had any. Me either. Because the one that mattered to me, C.D. Lamb, was the clutch player, but he played against me. Yeah. See, for me, it was Zay Flowers and Justice Hill. They showed up really big for me when I had to pick them up during that playoff, right at the beginning of the playoff. Primarily Justice Hill. Okay. Zay Flowers, just he's been doing a great job this entire season, but during this playoff Justice run, Hill. he... He turned it up these last four weeks. Justice Hill is the clutch player on the Ravens right now. <laughs> He's showing up right when the Ravens need him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I would go as far as saying he's the clutch player for the Ravens because. Well, Lamar Jackson, <laughs> man, you got the MVP. Lamar Jackson is ball. Yeah, that too, but. I mean, I'm I'm just saying he he's showing up right when when they needed a running game. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, shit, they've they've been they've been they've been minus a running game all year, man. He's been there all year. Yeah. Gus Edwards was doing okay. Justice him and him and Gus Edwards been carrying him all year. Yeah. Keaton Mitchell came in for a minute, then he got hurt. Yeah. yeah. Um, but what's your thoughts on that, man? On uh, the Miami Baltimore game? Baltimore proved they're the best team in the league. I, yeah, I'm lying. Hey, I, I don't see any way anyone can see it any differently right now. What great team have has beaten Baltimore this year? And we have great teams, but none of them's beaten them. Beating the Ravens. Um, I, I'm going. I'm going to push back on that with Cleveland. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I can get behind that because did they lose to Cleveland? Yes. Oh, see, that's dangerous. <laughs> Cleveland yeah. is dangerous, man. Yes, very Cleveland dangerous. Cleveland is dangerous, man. Especially with Joe Flacco at quarterback right now. But right now, uh, I, I'm going to agree because Baltimore smoked the Lions and beat them bad and smoked them. They smoked the 49ers and beat them bad. And then they smoked Miami and beat them bad. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, they're sitting. It's theirs to lose. The doesn't top. Miami also doesn't Miami also have a losing record against teams with a winning winning record? Um, yes. So, yes, but they were still considered at this time until until Baltimore kicked their ass. They were considered by many, by most, the second best team in the, in the AFC. Yeah. 
Um, however, <laughs> there's a good argument for Buffalo, and nobody wants to nobody wants to claim Cleveland, but. I well, I was just saying, talk to my mom. You want the team earlier. to watch, man? man yeah, I was Cleveland's gonna be mom. dangerous. I was talking to my mom this morning, telling her I was like, the only team I can see knocking off the Ravens is Cleveland. It's the only team that has that chance. The way Flacco's out there playing right now, offensively. Yeah, no, they weren't cruising and like that when the Ravens beat them earlier. Nothing like beat them earlier. In the nothing year. would would give Flacco. More of a big uh, man, Flacco would have had a biggest smile if he walked into Baltimore and beat him with Cleveland. Ooh, for the <laughs> AFC championship at that. Ooh. Let me, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Well, first of all, I mentioned this, but I, I did say this. I was just for the record, folks. I did say this like last week that I think the only team that can beat Baltimore is Cleveland. Um, but look at it. Look at all of the angles. Look at all of the story that lines there. Not only is Flacco kicking, not only is Flacco slaying the dragon, the dragon happens to be his former team that he previously won the Super Bowl with. And the dragon also happens to be formerly known as the Cleveland Browns. Oh. You know? <laughs> Oh, story, man! Think about that for a minute. Let that shit sink in. Now, with the rest of the playoffs, though, going can, I, on. can I take you a step further? Yeah. Because I lived in Cleveland. I lived in Cleveland when the Browns left. I don't know if y'all realize this. But the year after the Browns left and moved to Baltimore, the Baltimore Ravens won the Super Bowl. Yep. Mm. Yep. And Cleveland was pissed. The city of Cleveland has not forgiven the Ravens for leaving still. Art Modell, Art Modell has a statue built upside down. No. <laughs> yeah, Cleveland's still pissed at Baltimore. Oh, they hate Art Modell. Yeah, oh yeah. And they 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 so they will never they they Baltimore is like venom because y'all stole our team and then won the Super Bowl after you left. The year after leaving, they they won the Super Bowl. Yeah. A city that's never been to the Super Bowl. Had a team that was one year away from going. You can't call him Little Pork Chop no more. He Big Pork Chop now. What up, Big Pork Chop? Hey, oh. they said, what up? That is not Pork Chop. That is Pork Tenderloin. <laughs> he said, "Nope, I was finna offer him the mic to say what's up." He said, "No, nah, that's OC. That is a pork chop uh, combo." <laughs> hey, like I told him, no, he still can't beat me. Yeah, he can whoop your ass. No, he can't. Yeah, I think. He no, can. he can't. I think he can get you, dog. No, he can't. Challenge him. Don't challenge him. Just leave he him. can't take a punch. Just don't challenge him, man. That's all I'm saying. Just don't challenge him, bro. Just, just. Oh, I'm not going to challenge him. He's challenging me. Don't challenge him, man, because he, <laughs> he, I think he can get you now. <laughs> yeah, right, nah. For you guys real quick. What's that? Uh, how do you guys feel about the fact that there's a, a very real possibility the Houston Texans gets into the playoffs and the Bills don't? I think that is freaking incredible. What's the Bills record right now? Ooh, I don't even remember. I thought they were getting in. I, I thought they were pretty much already in. Oh, they're fighting for their lives right now. I know the Houston Texans got a good shot to get in, and yeah. I think that's phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Especially with the rookie quarterback that's had the season. And a rookie coach. Yeah, yeah a rookie coach that's had this season. Rookie that quarterback and a rookie coach. So yeah, they're, they're this year's from worst to first. 
D'Amico Ryans is in in the conversation for Coach of the Year. Um, Dan Campbell is in the conversation for Coach of the Year. But I think Cleveland's coach is going to win it. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. I can see that. I, I can see that one. But, man, you, you D'Amico Ryans has to be Coach of the Year. No, you don't. You go, you go pretty much from worst to first. <laughs> Cleveland lost four. Lost three quarterbacks. Yeah, and they in. Mm-hmm. With a geriatric and, quarterback. With an April the quarterback, they pulled off the couch. With the quarterback, got to be some said. There's got to be some said for that Kurt Warner effect right there. I'm just sitting here like, I'm. They got a quarterback that's not only off the couch. But he's got a life alert bracelet, and he's doing the damn thing. Yeah, that means so he he he's. I think he's going to win it, uh, but I think D'Amico Ryan's and Dan Campbell are also in the conversation. I, I think I think those are the three. I think those are the three coaches in the conversation. Yeah, if it was up to me, it'd be it, it'd be D'Amico Ryan's. I, I concur. But I can't deny what, what they're doing in Cleveland. Yeah. I mean, I can't discount what's happening. What's happening there. You you lost Nick. You're not, let's not talk about. You also lost Nick Chubb. Let's not forget that. Yeah. You lost Nick Chubb. Then you lost your quarterback. Then you lost your backup quarterback. Then you lost the backup to the backup quarterback. Right <laughs> with Joe Flacco, who's reinvigorating Amari Cooper. So you went and grabbed... You went and grabbed Joe Flacco off the couch. From the grocery store. <laughs> and you know what? Here's the crazy thing. Even before you got him off the couch, you were still sustaining good enough mm-hmm. to be where you are. They right. were, it wasn't like 10 or 11 games now. Yeah. They're 11 and 4, 11 and 5. 11 and 5. Yeah. That's strong as acid, man. Yeah. That's strong as acid. And you're winning going into the playoffs. And nobody saw him coming. No. But, man, Miles Garrett and that damn crossover it is. Dang. <laughs> it's dang. So, yeah, I think uh, I think them and, him and uh, D'Amico Ryan is, is, is neck and neck there. It's tough. It's going to be a tough call. And Dan Campbell is going to be in the conversation too, though. He has to be. Because they had to live up to a lot of expectations. Watch. Watch this off season. Every defensive lineman is going to be working with the uh, uh, NBA point guard, working on that crossover. I don't see it. I I I, I don't think you. I think you. Um, I'm missing how good of a basketball player Miles Garrett is. Yeah. I yeah, that too. I don't think you're seeing that uh, when you when you talk about it. So it makes sense for him to. Work out with the NBA players because he's a basketball player. Yeah, but I I, I'm just ball. saying he's he's not the only one. Play. But I don't know he, if you've ever seen him play. This yeah, dude not been, basketball. This, this dude could be in, in the NBA. But no, what I'm what I'm saying is there's actually a a couple of other people that have been using the crossover move on the defensive line this year. Besides Miles Garrett, Michael Parsons he's used a, it. But What's he's that? a bona fide baller. Yeah, he he plays like he plays like he could be, he could play in the, in a pickup game with the pros and hold his own. Okay, so he's a baller, baller, and you see, you already know how big he is, right? So it's not a whole lot of people stopping him from going to the hole and dunking. Yeah, no. And he can and he can go to the hole and yoke hard. Oh, Miles Garrett can ball. He's a basketball player. But it is a copycat league. That's what that's what I'm getting at, pretty much. It is. It is. Uh, but it also takes it also takes a certain set of skills to do certain things. Right. You know, it may, if you if you're not a basketball player. But speaking of Dan Campbell, okay. What are your thoughts on the Lions Cowboy game? I'll drop the mic. That's been the rule in football forever. 
if you fumble in the end zone and it goes out of bounds, it's the other team's ball. Why are you complaining about it now? Because it happened to you. That's the only that that's the only thing I got on it. That's a, shit. I'm more concerned about why the hell are these refs not checking in these damn linemen when they come up to the damn refs and they're calling them for a penalty that's bogus because they weren't paying attention and doing their damn job. I didn't see that part. Evidently, Big Ed didn't watch the game. Oh, my no, God. I didn't. Detroit got screwed out of that game by those refs. There is a reason why the NFL uh, decided, yeah, we're going to demote this re- uh, referee crew and they will not be working any playoff games. That was an egregious act by those damn refs. That was horrible. And it's about time the NFL actually stepped up and did something about refs making a bad call. And you know what? I'm going to take it a step further because that was horrible. And there's video evidence to prove it. Evidence to prove it. Um, and it was so bad that people forgot about the absolutely horrendous pass interference call that they missed against Amon Rossi Brown early in the game on a third down play that made the Lions have to turn the ball over instead of keep the drive going. And they would have put them down in field goal range, as a matter of fact. And I mean, he got, I mean, he got bludgeoned. The guy held him the entire time the ball was coming. And he did. He, he looked, turned around, and, and they, they were like, well, "I can see where he's got an argument." And they didn't say nothing. But they missed the same kind of call last week in the Green Bay Kansas City game. Yeah, they missed the same call in pass interference call in the Green Bay Kansas City, an egregious one that they missed. But uh, to frame this for Big Ed, and I, I don't want to go too far down this rabbit hole because everyone had. I'm surprised Big Ed went where he went because nobody's been talking about that. Everybody's been talking about the fact that at the end of the game, the Lions scored a touchdown and they had the choice to go for two for the win or kick a field goal to tie. And they chose to go for two. And Penny Sewell and Taylor Decker ran over to the referee so that they could they could um check in and say I'm eligible. Right. And number 70 was running up towards them as the referee ran away from those from Penny Sewell and Taylor Decker to go let the defense know that they checked in as eligible. Mm-hmm. They ran the play. It worked. They ran, they threw a touchdown to Taylor Decker in the end zone. Well, not a touchdown, but the two point conversion to pretty much ice the game. Damn. And about 30 seconds later, the refs threw a flag and said number 70 checked in, but number 68 didn't. Yep. Oh, wow. So it's a penalty. And they took it away. And the Cowboys won. That's Jerry Jones paying people. And the <laughs> video evidence shows them running up to the referee. There's no audio of that right. conversation, but the video shows the video shows Jared Goff in the huddle telling them to go check in. <laughs> right. Then it shows them running over to the referee and checking in, him acknowledging it and running toward, and number 70 is running towards the, running onto the field towards the referee as the referee is running away. But yet number 70 is who he said checked in and not number 68. And Dan Campbell told the referee before the game that I was going to do this. Mm -hmm. He told the ref before the game. I'm going to be having number 70 check in often, but when I need it later in the game, there's going to be a time that number 68 is going to check in instead. Right. Because I want them to constantly, I want the defense to think number 70 is checking in 
when number 68 is the one that's checking in. Right. Not you, motherfucker. <laughs> Not the ref. <laughs> so, yeah, it was it was a screw job and uh it was an obvious one. It was bad. And and it, the earlier call gets erased because this one was for the game. Not only right. was it for the game, but Philly lost. Yep. So because Philly lost, the Lions in yep. the 49ers would be playing next week for first for the overall one seed. And they would have no lower than the two seed. Right. Now they can't do better than the now they're locked in on a three seed. And Dallas is, is able to play for the two seed. Dallas is able to play for the two seed. Damn. See, that's Jerry Jones, man. That's that That's that money. And Dallas is able to play for the two seed. The Lions would have been playing not only for the two seed, but if, the, if next week the Lions would have beat Minnesota and 49ers lose to the Rams, the Lions would get the one seed. Oh, damn. And at worst, they would get the two. If the, as long as they won, they would get the two seed. Damn. If both teams won next week, they would get two seed. If they won and the 49ers lost, they would get the one seed. Instead, they get the three seed. And they're locked in. OG, you said you're ready for rabbit holes, right? I'm ready. This, this is an NFL conspiracy. Uh, against the Lions because of Ford Field and the Ford name that's attached to the Lions. Keep going. All all, all of this uh, Jewish and Palestine shit that's going on right now, Henry Ford was a, a known anti-Semite. So they got to treat the Lions like this. Because he's an anti, you know what I'm. You see what I'm saying? I hear you, but I, I didn't. I, I've never heard that Henry Ford was an anti semite. Oh yeah, Henry no. Ford. Henry Ford was a, a staunch anti semite. Keep going. I'm listening. I mean, he, he tried to bring the Nazi Party here to America. Mm. To get rid of the Jews here in America. He said they're ruining the film industry. They're ruining the workforce, and and everything else. So there's a rabbit hole for you. Ooh, that's a heavy fucking rabbit hole there, bro. That's a heavy. Henry Ford actually helped fund the Nazi party in Germany. Damn, you bringing up some shit now. I don't, I gotta look. I gotta go ahead and look it up. No, you gotta no nope. You gotta prove that you. I didn't say it. I ain't gotta look it up. Okay, I'll I'll, I'll send you the links. Yeah, I was going to say, you send that stuff. Let's move on to something. Ooh. <laughs> something else. Yeah, that was, whoa, that was some shit right there. <laughs> All right, here's my question. is: Where will Russell Wilson uh, end up next year? Pittsburgh. The easy answer is Pittsburgh. Um... Yeah, it's gonna say New Orleans. I think they're gonna ride it out with Derek Carr again. Oh yeah, Derek Carr's been balling, but I don't know if he's gonna start. And I don't think Pittsburgh gonna be the place for him. Hmm. I don't think Pitt, I don't think Pittsburgh is convinced he'll be there and be the savior. And and I don't they don't want. I don't think they want him coming in thinking he's the savior. Right. That's a lot of pressure, not only on him, but also on Pittsburgh. With yeah. Bill Kirk on his way out, does Ooh. the Patriots make a move to get Russell Wilson and bring in a new coach to work with him? Who? To help mentor Derek, uh, Drake May? Yeah, the Patriots. Oh, New England is what you said? Yeah, yeah New England. Yeah, New England is a good, plot. It's a good spot. I could see New England. 
over people. You don't need his leadership there. It's be the stopgap. Uh, be the stopgap between Drake May. I could see that. I could see New England over Pittsburgh. I would say New England. Yeah, I could see New England. I, I like the idea of Pittsburgh. That sounds more enticing, especially with the way Mike Tomlin hasn't had a single losing season as head coach for Pittsburgh. And that sounds really enticing to a quarterback like Russell Wilson, knowing that with the weapons he will have at one receiver, with George Pickens and uh, Deontay and everyone else. Jalen Warren, Najee Harris. Russell Wilson could get enticed by that. Young tech. But you but know what helped, you know know what helped Pittsburgh Russell? Wanted. I don't know if Pittsburgh wants him. I don't no. think they do. I think they're going to, I don't know. I think it'll be dumb, but I think they'll give uh, Kenny another chance. You know, as good of a quarterback as, as Russell Wilson is, I will still say that he's a game manager more than he is an elite quarterback. Because he always. Okay, you know what? I'm not going down a okay. game manager. Oh, we're not doing that. I'm not jumping down. That's <laughs> one rabbit hole I'm staying out of right now. Yeah. I'm not jumping down a rabbit hole there on on a game manager thing because that's 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 too. Um, game manager is not. It, it's too. It's too. I'm not going there. Okay. I'm not going there. It, it, it's it, right now. There's controversy over whether a game manager is. It, it carries a negative connotation when it shouldn't. It shouldn't, but he he's, he's not a, he's not a quarterback that's going to go a, and win the game by himself. But you know what? The year Peyton Manning won the last Pey- the last Super Bowl Peyton Manning won. You know what he was? He was a, a game, game manager. manager. Yeah, yeah. He he couldn't throw more than twenty yards. You know what Tom Brady was? Tom Brady was a game manager. Greatest game manager of all time. But Tom could go and win you games. Okay. No, Tom could manage manage the game. I don't. I, I'm not. Buy, I'm not going there. Now let's stay out of that. Okay. I, I want to say this. This is this is more important to me. This is this is really the issue. Michigan kicked Alabama's ass tonight. God damn it. Let's go down that rabbit hole, motherfucker. How about that rabbit hole? Shit. Everybody that I told y'all Michigan was going to beat Alabama and y'all told me it wasn't going to happen, I'm talking to you right here, right now. Michigan kicked Alabama's ass. I told you it was going to happen, and that's the rabbit hole I'm ready to go down. Remember, I'm the one that, that, remember I'm the one that said that Alabama didn't belong there. Every, that's what Michigan said. Alabama didn't belong. They showed everybody tonight. Why didn't you have the? You should have had Florida State here because these old sorry motherfuckers didn't belong. <laughs> <laughs> and that's actually exactly what I said. Florida State beat them. They, they, Florida State should have been there. Is Florida State didn't beat Alabama? Oh no, it was Florida, wasn't it? Texas. Oh, Texas. Texas is there. Texas is in because they beat Alabama. The problem was that Alabama lost to Texas and Florida State was undefeated. Right. Okay. So Georgia was undefeated as well. So it was okay that Georgia was getting in over Florida State as the undefeated team. Right. And Texas probably wouldn't have got in. It probably would have been Michigan, Washington, Tech, uh, uh, Florida State and Georgia in there. Not in no particular order. I'm not seeing them when I say that. Uh, because those would have been the only four undefeated teams. Right. But then Alabama beat Georgia in the SEC championship game. Yeah. So now Alabama, now Georgia is out. So we're we going to keep the SEC out completely. No, we can't keep the SEC out completely. We have to put Alabama in because they beat Georgia. But if we put Alabama in, then we got to put Texas in because Texas beat Alabama. 
which left Florida State on the outside looking in, saying, but we undefeated. We ain't lost to nobody. Right. And so there, there in lied, there in lied the issue. So now Washington and Texas is playing right now. They're 21, tied at 21 at the half, but um, Michigan beat Alabama. Alabama. They beat them like they stole something. <laughs> beat the shit out of them motherfuckers. Whoop they ass. Oh, JJ McCarthy, that kid's going to be something special. Man, tell me, tell me, let me tell you something. Blake Corum is going to be something special. Man. Blake Corum wasn't there when they lost last year. I'll let y'all go ahead and talk Michigan football. I'm going to take a 20-second break. You know what? Ways, take a pause and take a 20-second break. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen. And um, Ways, where we at? We ain't going to talk about it. We, We went down a Michigan rabbit hole. Kicking the Alabama ass, uh, and, and now I need to know where we at. All right, so uh, Big A, you got our heavy hitters from last week? Oh yes, I do. Heavy hitters from last week at quarterback, we have Lamar Jackson, Jordan Love, and Justin Fields. At running back, we have Kyron Williams. Whoa, 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 whoa. back oh, up, oh, Justin oh. Fields. Yep, Justin Fields. Play for Chicago. Yep, play for Chicago. Saved so his that brings job. a question before you go forward. That brings a question. Uh, there's a rabbit hole there. Okay. And I want to send you guys down this rabbit hole. Okay. We talked about it a couple of weeks ago. All right. What did Chicago do with their first pick? Marvin Harrison Jr. Do they trade out of that first pick? Or do they trade Justin Fields? Uh, I think they used the first pick. Justin Fields has a contract coming up that's going to limit what they can do moving forward. That's the only argument I can make for for trading Justin Fields. I I Honestly, that's the only argument I can make because to me, I'm keeping him and I'm trading the pick. I'm keeping the pick. I'm using that pick on Marvin Harrison Jr. I'm trading their second first round pick. What pick? What, how, how high is that pick though? Uh, it'll if be it's outside top the top. It, yeah, if it's outside the top five, it ain't gonna be worth it. It'd be a top ten pick. And if it's outside the top five, it ain't gonna be worth it. I don't know. There's a lot of teams that, that look to move up. So yeah, it, not if it's outside the top five, you ain't gonna get value for that. I, I would say if you're keeping the first one, keep them both. And Hold make- on. They got they got value for the number nine pick last year. What'd they get? They ended up with uh, Darnell Wright and two other picks. What was the other two picks? I think it, I believe it was a second and a fourth. Yeah. If, if you outside the top five, make both your picks. Cause you ain't getting value for that second pick. They only got six picks this year, though. Okay. That's fine. So it, 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 if they trade that second pick for two or three picks, to me, that's good. Not if you don't know how to use them them late round picks. If you're not good at making late round picks, you may as well make that high pick. Uh, Roshan Johnson, Tyler Scott, and uh, uh, what uh, the Stevenson kid. At corner, three late round picks that have actually panned out. Okay, I, I, I'm going. I'm going to hold my. I'm going to hold my comment because we're talking about a team that's still talking. We're t- still talking about a team that still has a top ten pick, and he's telling me all these picks that panned out, but they ain't winning no goddamn games. So anyway, Wade, what's your thought? Um, I think they keep Justin Fields. 
I do think they should use that first overall on Marvin Harrison. And I think they should actually capitalize and see what they could find as far as like a defensive back uh, with that ninth overall. Yeah, I think that second pick you keep. I don't think you're getting I don't think you're getting the value for that pick by trading it that you get by making a pick. Yeah. You can you, you can pick up a defensive back with that pick. And... They have holes and they don't have time. Yeah. Because Justin Fields is going to need a contract very soon. So unless you Okay, so you made three over over the how many years? How many years ago did they? How many over what year span are they making all these great late round picks? You're saying they had three good late round picks over how many years? Oh, they uh, they've had more than three. Eddie Jackson was a late round pick. You naming niggas that I don't know. Roshan, you you name one person that I mentioned of, 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 of these of the four you just named. Eddie Jackson was starting safety. I don't give a fuck if he start for a sorry team. That don't make him shit. I'm just telling you, there's one name that you Bojack. You Bojack, Bojack has name been one been, of has been one of the best safeties in the league the last five years. Did he make the Pro Bowl two, three years ago. Okay, so how long he's like, been I hurt? Said, he's been hurt what, the last couple. Over years. what span of time has he made these four great great picks in the, in, the, in these well, leagues? Ryan Poles has only been there for two years. So he don't so so anything over over the last two years. Brisker was a late round season. pick. Uh let me see who else. Brisker, Jalen Johnson was a late round pick. Uh Kyler Gordon was a late round pick. Our defensive backfield is actually pretty stacked. As long as we sign Jalen Johnson. Okay, so you're saying your your philosophy is pick pick Marvin Jackson and trade away the next pick. I trade away that sec- that that second first round pick. I trade away that. I get Marvin Harrison Jr. I I'd have I'd pair him with DJ Moore one and two. Move Darnell Mooney over to the slot. Cole Komet still at at, at tight end. And the offense, those are weapons on the offense. I'd resign. Uh, Deontay Foreman and actually cut Khalil Herbert or actually no I wouldn't cut Khalil Herbert I'd trade Khalil Herbert because you can get a couple picks for him I mean you're naming all these players that they, they didn't pick why, why are they not winning games coaching alright you know what I give up I Maybe give up like the sixth coach I was done said this about I get oh him. well, you got Mark Tressman. Yeah, he sucked. John Fox, he wasn't nothing after Carolina. I mean, it, yeah, it's been coaching. <laughs> it's also talent. It's also talent. Um, I believe the, me personally. I hear you. Okay, if that's your philosophy, and, and and maybe that's what they'll do. I don't know, but me personally. I don't think they're going to get the value out of trading that pick that they would get out of using that pick. I think I would, I would use both of those picks. Yeah. I would use both of those picks and pick some young talent. Yeah. I would, I would get two top 10 talents on my roster right now. And I would even consider one of those top 10 uh, prospects being a tight end as well. Cause Maybe a top ten, maybe a tight end, or another, or or an offensive tackle, yeah. offensive somebody on the off getting me another offensive line. I can see that. I, I can deal with that. Picks. But I, I wouldn't using both of those picks if I'm. Sure I wouldn't I'm use it on a quarterback. Well, no, I'm keeping. I've got just. I'm got Justin Fields, and I'm keeping Justin Fields. Use one of those yeah. later so rounds. Here's, here's my problem. Here's here's my issue. Here's my issue. If I'm if I'm running the bed, I got two things. Two problems with the Justin with Justin Fields. There's two things I have to consider. One is I got a contract coming up with him. Two is I've got a contract coming up with him. 
right? That's both of my problems. One is I either got to pay him too much fucking money. And then I've got to consider what else, what, what am I going to do moving forward to try to build now that I'm paying him $240 million or more, right? Or because I haven't been able to build a winner around him, this motherfucker might bail. Now what? So that's the two issues I'm up against with Justin Fields. So I'm not taking a chance on trading away the ninth pick in the draft for a second, third, fourth round pick with that I've, uh, that is a far more hit or miss than if I use this ninth pick. I just used the first overall pick to get you a weapon. And I just used the ninth pick to protect you. See, I can get with I can get with that more than, than drafting Jamarcus Russell. And then I can say, right. now you were now now we we are worth you staying in Chicago, because I got to first convince him to stay in Chicago, right? Then I got to pay. Him. Right. That's the two issues you got with with Justin Fields. If you keep him, if you keep Justin Fields, you first got to convince him that it's the. Staying is the right move for him in his career, and then you got to pay him. See, talking the locker room is there's going to be a mutiny if they let go of Justin Fields. It ain't about letting them go. <laughs> uh, well, not let him go, but if if they trade him or whatever, it's a mutiny in the locker room. You do understand. He, and he owns the locker room. <laughs> Hopefully, the Bears organization and the uh, team understands that actually breaks their clauses with the NFLPA. That will put them in violation and would actually end up with far worse repercussions for them than the league. For well, what? What was what, 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 the I'm Bears sorry. are to try to have a mutiny and try to show their oh, ass? Yeah, yeah the, fuck the, that. I don't give a fuck. Fuck that mutiny. That don't make yeah. that don't make the mutiny. All that just means is they you know what? You so, collecting the check. You get out there and earn your money. Or you can go to you and I'll bring in some because that ain't going to last. Mm-hmm. I will bring in somebody else that don't give a fuck about Justin Fields. And I will guess what? I will get picks for you. Mm-hmm. So you want out? No problem. Where you want to go? Oh, you want to go to Kansas City? No problem. I'll send your ass to, to fucking uh, Tampa Bay or wherever I want to send you. I send that's just. I will send you to Carolina. Send I will send days. you anywhere you don't. Every, I will send you anywhere you don't want to go. If, does Maine have a football team? I'll send you there. I don't give a fuck about your mutiny. That's not a, that is a zero concern to me because it's all about the money. Yeah. And the money says I either got to, I, I got to first convince him to stay. If I decide to keep him, I have to convince him to stay and then I have to pay him. That's my two issues with Justin Fields. So to convince him to stay, I need to make two bold moves in his favor to show him that I care that I'm trying. And then I got to pay the man. It's simple as that. It's really not that complicated. But I don't trust. I don't trust Caleb Williams. I'm not going. I'm not getting rid of him for no fucking Caleb Williams. Caleb I, like Williams this, I like this boy right here, Michael Penix. Yeah. That's my guy. To me, that's my guy. That's the quarterback I want. Give me that dude. Speaking right. of Williams. Uh, moving on with the heavy hitters. Oh yeah, Tyron Williams. Oh yeah, we were doing high heavy hitters, man. <laughs> I, you you were chasing these rabbit holes, nigga. All right, let's stay away from the rabbit holes, ladies and gentlemen. It is the first of the year. It is one one twenty four. Happy New Year to you. I'm so very happy to be here. I'm happy that you're here with us, and I am just proud to say that the new year is going to bring a whole lot of new stuff, and I'm excited. And I want to go down all the rabbit holes. And we we was having a long conversation before we started about smoking weed. Y'all missed that. Uh-huh. But if y'all want me to recap it. Uh, we'll do that on the smoke session. I'll talk about it right now. 
Right now, we got to talk about these running backs or, or the heavy hitters. Who's the heavy hitter running backs? Kyron Williams. Yep. Isaiah Pacheco. Yeah. And Brees Hall. See, Pacheco going to the Bears. No, he's not. Hey, not yeah. for Justin Fields. What, Justin Fields? No. <laughs> hey, ain't, ain't that what Wade said? Marvin Harrison Jr. For that first pick. Oh. <laughs> that first. What that Marvin Harrison Jr.? Yeah, no. They give yeah, up, we, they giving up the first pick for Pacheco. No, he ain't. No, he ain't. That's the Here's ways, it. man. There's this. I'm on, I'm on with ways of smoking. Man. Uh, for wide way. receivers. I smoke some. Okay, what's you say? I, I did smoke some weed. <laughs> I smoked <laughs> weed yesterday for the first time in a long time, man. High as hell. Uh, wide receivers. I was so high that he didn't see CD Lamb beat him. I saw CD <laughs> Lamb. <laughs> I saw CD Lamb. CD Lamb is definitely at the top of the heavy hitters list. Yes, he is. Yeah. Uh, second in the heavy hitters for wide receivers is Devontae Moore or Devontae Adams. Sorry. The reason I said Moore is because third in wide receivers is DJ Moore. He was excited because he wanted to mention the Chicago Bears. <laughs> I did. But yeah, I did see CD Lamb. See, unlike Big Ed, I watched the game. <laughs> so yeah, I did see CD Lamb light their ass up. He was it was phenomenal. Oh, but it was a lucky play. That one play was the luckiest play I've seen all year. And if you wasn't watching, you don't know what I mean. But if you were, you already do. So C.D. Lamb got a 92-yard touchdown pass. It was the longest touchdown pass in Cowboy history. But let me tell you what happened. They ran a safety blitz, and the Cowboys totally missed it. Safety came in free. Clear shot at Dak Prescott in the end zone. And this motherfucker just had a brain fart and blew right past him. <laughs> he ran right. I mean, when I tell you he ran right past him and reached his arm out like he was trying to strip the ball. He did a no. Madden tackle. <laughs> but dude, when I tell you, nobody, nobody touched him. He came touch free, dead shot, straight at Brent Prescott, and Prescott did not see him coming. Nobody saw him. He came straight. He was number 55. That's how much I remember it. Came straight, clear shot at him and ran right past him. Ain't that Anzalone? No, oh. it was the safety. Okay. And he blew right past. He blew right past D Prescott and Prescott sidestepped and threw the ball up and went no safeties back there. Right. And the cornerback fell down. <laughs> the cornerback failed CJ Sutton fell down. And I mean, CJ caught the ball and he stopped and he moonwalked from about the 40 yard line into the end zone. Damn. That's how open it was. It was nobody nowhere near him after he caught the ball. It was like he turned around like, damn, nobody? That's like Aaron Rodgers and Randall Cobb. It was just a it was just a boy. I, and it was it went from it went from being a clear cut safety to a touchdown. It was a nine point swing in one play. Wow. Wow. Nine point swing in one play. But when I tell you it was when I tell you he came clean at him, it was the it was ridiculous. Yeah. Tight ends. Uh, tight ends. Jawan Johnson. Isaiah Likely. And David Njoku. Yeah. Isaiah. Did, Isaiah. Did somebody you, have Isaiah Likely as a wild card last week? I did. Isaiah used to be unlikely. <laughs> but now <laughs> he's Mark Andrews. He's been a lot more likely. But I I said when I first saw him. This was uh, last season in the showdown. I said, Isaiah Likely is going to be a really good tight end at one point. 
look for him to make some noise. And uh, now he's coming to fruition. He has really been balling out lately. He's a, he's, I, I, I saw it coming though. He's a, uh, I had him in my taxi in the dynasty league. Yep. Yeah, I got a tight end of the future in my dynasty league because I did likely about to take Mark Andrews' spot. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. Especially if he keeps getting hurt. Yeah. All right, so y'all ready to make your picks? I'm ready to make some picks. All right, our first game this week, we got the Cleveland Brown. Nope. We're not doing that one. Then. Houston Texans versus the Indianapolis Colts. Winner takes it all for their division. H Town, baby. Yeah, I'm going Houston. I'm going Houston as well. Yeah. Now the winner goes to the playoffs. Yeah. Yes. The loser is the winner is in. The loser is out. The winner wins the division, don't? Yep. Oh no, Jacksonville's still there. Yeah, Jacksonville's still. There. No, Jacksonville ain't got it wrapped up, though, do they? No, I think they got to win to win the division, too. Yeah, yeah I think so. They got I tennis. think so. Because they, they ain't been no freaking world beaters. Oh. <laughs> oh, they've been beaten by the world, though. Uh, Minnesota at Detroit. Minnesota. I'm going Detroit. Oh, Minnesota. Detroit's trying to stay fresh. Uh, Chicago at Green Bay. Uh, Green Bay. I'm going Chicago. This is interesting because if the Vikings lose, the Bears or the Packers could potentially sneak into the playoffs depending on who wins their game, which I think would be the Packers. So I'm going to go Packers. Oh, yeah. What you said? I uh, I, next... said, I said Green Bay. Oh, you did? Okay. I was uh, going to say, OG said the Vikings. Why would he say the Vikings? I did say the, the Vikings, Packers. but that was in the last game. <laughs> I'm getting tired. No, yeah, it's on me. Uh, it's wearing him out. It's first, it's, you know, he's getting tired. It's New Year's Day. Happy New Year. I don't he's know. Getting tired. He's getting tired of, of these, these Rabbit turnovers holes. that the Vikings are doing. Oh, rabbit well. holes that keep going down. I can't help it. I told y'all I'm headed down rabbit holes. It's New Year's Day. Happy New Year to you. I'm glad you made it here. I'm glad I made it here. All right. We got the Rams at the 49ers. Ooh. The Rams. Wow. I'm actually going 49ers. I'm going with the Rams because I want to keep Brock Purdy healthy for the play. Uh, 49ers has wrapped up first uh, first overall seed yes. in the NFC. But I don't think they're going to help the Rams get in the playoffs. I don't think they care. They don't care? I they don't think care. they care. Let's give our let's get our starters two weeks off. Rams huh? got first got if Rams get into the playoffs, they got to get through the first round. Yeah. We have to worry about them. While your starters have two weeks of rest. I'm chilling. Yeah, but the Rams is actually looking dangerous right now, too. That's fine and dandy. <laughs> That's fine and dandy. We'll see how that goes. They can look however they want. We're going to let them look dangerous this week. Yeah. Because we're going to be resting our peoples. They're going to look real dangerous against our second string. Why would you rest them this week and uh, give them two Thank weeks off? I ain't got, and then you got to worry about Russ when, when, when you do play the game. I have, well, you know, we worry about Russ when we play basketball. Russell Westbrook played for the Clippers. <laughs> and Russ, Russ, Russell Wilson is out. So we ain't worried about Russ. <laughs> I got our last game here. No, so speaking of Russell Wilson being out for the season. Yeah. Uh, there has been the CB of uh, the uh, NFLPA is saying that uh, Denver Broncos is violating the CBA. Yeah. Actions. Yeah. They are coming after the Broncos. In fact, I, I was just just before we started the show. I was watching. Uh, it, it's either Sam or Emmanuel, one of the two Acho brothers. Uh, he was doing an interview oh, was with it, somebody. Was it, uh, Cinco? No, no, it, it was Acho Cinco. 
Oh no, Sam or Emmanuel Acho. Oh, it was Acho Cinco. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he was doing an interview with somebody that you know he's got inside information to Russell Wilson. He said on October 29th, the day after they beat Kansas City, Denver came to him and they was like, "We need you to re- restructure your contract." And, and if you don't, we're going to sit you. Yep. And not only are we going to sit you, we're yep. just going to make you inactive. Yep. So, yep. yeah. NFLPA. You know they they actually, that came out, that, that came out last week. And you know what else, though? Mm. To add insult to injury, they're making him dress for the games. Right. You're inactive, but you're gonna sit on the sideline in, in 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 uniform. But not only do you not only do you beat Kansas City, you go out after that and you beat Minnesota and Buffalo. And then we're still gonna sit you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna be interesting to see how that plays out because Denver might uh be in a little bit of trouble. Oh yeah. Yeah, they're, they're getting hit with some type. They're going to lose at yes, least a draft pick or two. Over this. The <laughs> they're going to lose a draft pick or two. Yeah. Yeah, they're going to get in trouble. And Wilson going to be gone. Yep. With his money. And his money. Ooh, I just thought of somewhere for Wilson to go. The Raiders. Ooh. That is a good spot. They got a decent defense, and yeah. they got Devontae Adams, yeah. and they got Brandon Jacobs. And they ain't got no quarterback. Or J- Josh Jacobs, brother. And they ain't got no quarterback. Nope. That's an interesting prospect. And they got Raider fans. Oh, and then he got to play Denver twice a week. Uh, twice and they a year. in Vegas. And they in Vegas. Oh, Sierra going to have a field day with that. She getting residency. You 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 sat there and re- you got you right here with me, dog. You here, you there, bro, <laughs> bro. That's it. You 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 going to something, Big Ed? You going to some? Ladies and gentlemen, Big Ed, don't don't be right off it. <laughs> Not often do I sit here and say, I think you own something, Big Ed. I think he he gonna go to Las Vegas just to think it to Sean Payton. I see him we don't need you in here kissing babies. The whole time you got Drew Brees down there in New Orleans kissing babies. But you know what? The problem with Sean Payton got a problem. Sean Payton has a problem. What's that? I think a lot of people don't like how he came in treating Russell Wilson. Oh no! In the end, I think a lot of people are looking at that treatment as. Uh, a little low, and you know, brothers, brothers will say, "Sidestep your ass." Yep. Brothers will sidestep your ass. You are not the only game in town. For good, good players, don't need to play for you. Right. They got options. Players with options, they ain't gonna fuck with you. Right. All right, we got one last game here. Okay. Buffalo fighting for their playoff votes against Miami. At Miami. Buffalo. I'm going Buffalo, too. Their defense is kicking, and yeah, I don't, I don't see Miami being able to. Miami's got a losing record against winning teams. I see. And Buffalo's been on a roll for the last, what, five, six games? I see Miami giving their starters a break this week to get ready for next week. I see Buffalo winning this, getting into the playoffs, and probably having to face a fresh, ready. But, but bro, here, here's the thing you forget. They're division opponents. Mm-hmm. Guess what? There, there, there's, there's no, I'm going to take it easy on this team because I'm already in the playoffs. Well, there is. Not, not, in the, not in the division, bro. Not yeah. in the division. <laughs> oh, you want to bet? Minnesota didn't sit their starters to let Green Bay get in the uh, playoffs so we can knock them out in the first round? 
Yeah, but what Buffalo's real not playing. What's gonna do to you? you know, Buffalo's not playing Miami playoff, in the first I round. Get the pleasure of knocking you out. Buffalo's not playing Miami in the first round. Let's see. <laughs> Guess what? Let's see. <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. I'm I'm gonna go say I'm right on this one. Yeah. It's a division game. It's a div- they're not the weak ass Vikings, okay? Let me put it that way. Okay. <laughs> There's a Bears fan. <laughs> they're not the weak ass Vikings and just finna let the Packers walk into the fucking playoffs. No, that that that's that's not Buffalo. They they're I, hard mouth football. I, I understand you're saying a lot, but it's hard to hear you when you're down there in fourth place in the division. Oh. Uh, but when you guys lose to Detroit this week and we beat Green Bay, don't we still got a chance to go to the playoffs and you don't? Oh. Key word is if. There, there's <laughs> a lot of ifs when Bears fans talk. Oh, no, we whooping Green Bay's ass this week. <laughs> I picked Minnesota to beat Detroit this week. Oh, that's because you think Detroit's going to sit everybody. But Detroit's going to win that game. Even, even with their backups, Detroit's going to win. I don't think so. I don't think Detroit give a fuck. I don't, don't think, think Detroit wants it. Detroit wants to win the Super Bowl. The easiest Detroit the is Super still Bowl. pissed about the Cowboys. Yeah. Still in that game. And they're going to take it out on the Vikings. And they are going to... Lay an egg. <laughs> okay. We'll see. <laughs> we will see. <laughs> but shit, watch the Bears sneak into the playoffs next week. Uh, you know if what? The Bears I'll sneak into that. the playoffs, that would be that wouldn't be a good thing. So therefore, if if Minnesota wins, can the Bears still get in? No. No. Bears and the Packers are automatic. Therein lies the problem for the Bears. The Lions don't want the Bears in the playoffs. <laughs> no, but here's the thing. There's still no guarantee no, they for don't. the Vikings either because we still need Seattle to lose. Those games those games between the Lions were too goddamn close for them. But they won one, lost one. Yep. They almost won two, though. Hmm. That'll be interesting that the Bears do sneak in there, though. They sneak in the playoffs and got the first pick. The Lions will not help the Bears. <laughs> no. Won't happen. We'll see about that. <laughs> so that's all I got for you guys. They're going to they're gonna tank for Tampa. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> They oh, no. They went Tampa Bay in the first round. They want to play Tampa in the playoffs. So they're tanking for Tampa. <laughs> that is shit. I wouldn't want to see Tampa in the playoffs. Detroit does. Because, man, Tampa's dangerous, too. I don't know. Baker Ball. Nah. nah. <laughs> With that said, that does it for this week's Carol. show. <laughs> They're fine. We're good with Tampa. We, hey, we did Tampa. We did a two and a half hour show. Yeah, that's all I was like. I think it's about time that uh, we wrap it up here. <laughs> Today is January 1st, 2024. Welcome to the new millennium. This is a new year. It's a new day. It's make new money, day? make money, make, make money. Shit hits the fan with take money, south side. But anyway, man, we out of here, man. This is the showdown. It's been a great show. I've had a great time. This is the new year. We're not gonna do this long of a show every time, but rabbit hole. First one of the year, man. It's the first one of the year. It's a new year, and I got a new attitude, and I got a new backdrop. And watch it. I'm telling you, keep your eyes on this backdrop. It's going to grow throughout the year. Take a snapshot and compare this to what it looks like in one year from today. And I guarantee you it won't be the same. 
I'm your boy OG Tim Wilson. On behalf of the Nasty Boys, Big Ed and Ways, we out of here like last year. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the channel, which is the What Up Those Show Network. If you like what you see, like what you see, that means hit the like button. If you like what you see, like what you see, that means hit the like button. And we out of here like last year. Peace.